Welcome to the first QMind Intro to AI video tutorial. The goal of these videos is to expand your knowledge, theory, and tool set in machine learning and computer science. We're going to start today by giving you a background in nodes, queues, stacks, and search trees. A node is a basic piece of data in computer science. This may contain some sort of value, such as numbers, states, or strings, and always has a reference or pointer to another node. A group of connected nodes is called a data structure. This is often represented as a circle containing the data value pointing to the connected nodes. A queue is a type of data structure. It can be thought of as a line of nodes. In a queue, the first node in is the first node out. This can be compared to a grocery line. A customer who enters the checkout line first will be the first to be checked out and the first to leave. This is called the first in, first out property. A queue is always ordered by the time of insertion. In this example, the rightmost node was placed in first, and the leftmost node was placed last. A queue will have many different operations associated with it. This may include onQueue, which is used to add a node to the end of the queue, or dequeue, which removes the first node from the queue and returns it. A stack is very similar to a queue, but instead follows the first in, last out property. This can be compared to the undo button in word processors. In this example, the stack would be the list of words you've typed. Following the first in, last out property, the last word you typed would be undone first. Stacks also have operations associated with them. Instead of on queue, stacks have an operation called push, which adds a node to the end of the data structure. Instead of dequeue, stacks are associated with a pop function, which removes nodes from the end. A search tree is another type of data structure. It looks similar to an upside down tree. In this data structure, each node may have more than one pointer to another node, as opposed to a queue, where there's only one connection. In search trees, one node can have many connections. A tree always reads from top to bottom, and the first node is called the root. A search tree can be compared to a family tree, with parent nodes branching downwards to child nodes. Each child node is a possible outcome after the state of the parent node. Let's look at an example. This is a search tree of a potential series of coin flips. We assume that the first flip was a head. The next potential flips are a head or a tail. From either of these nodes or outcomes, there are two more child nodes that can be either a head or a tail. Following one of these paths will give us a possible sequence of results. This can be applied to any search tree. In this case, the branching factor is 2. The branching factor is the maximum number of children a node can have. The depth of the search is 3. The depth is the number of levels of the tree. We can use a search tree to look through many different outcomes of more complex problems. Imagine a person in a gridded room where they can only move up, down, left, or right. If the person starts in the bottom left, they only have two possibilities of movement, up or right. Let's say we want to find how a person could move to the bottom middle square from the bottom left square. If we build a search tree like this one, we can search it to see what actions or routes through the tree we need to take to get there. We can expand the root node by looking at its potential actions and building up a list of its children. From these children, we can see that one of the nodes is our desired state. We need to move right to get into this position, or node. Looking at a more complex example, if we wanted to get to the very middle square starting from the bottom left, we would start similarly by expanding the root node and seeing the results. We can see if any of the nodes are equal to the one we are looking for. The node obtained by going up 1 has the person in the middle left spot, not equal to our desired state. The node obtained by going right 1 has the person in the bottom middle spot, also not equal to our desired state. Since none of the created nodes are equal to our desired state, we must expand the children of the current node. Two of these nodes are the same as our initial state and are therefore redundant, but we can see that our desired state is in this latest collection of nodes, the second from the left. We can trace our steps back and see that we needed to move up, then right to get there. However, this state appears twice in the latest collection of nodes. It is also the second node from the right. Tracing back, we can see that this node can also be obtained by moving right, then up. Some of these nodes are redundant, appearing more than once. If one of the nodes has already appeared somewhere else in the search tree, we don't need to expand it. This is an example of what a tree search algorithm could look like in pseudocode. To begin, we need to build our search tree, also known as a state space. We then explore this state space, starting at the root and trying to find the node which matches our desired state. Once we've found our desired node, or you've explored every node without finding it, the program ends. This is the general form of what we did earlier. Search algorithms change based on the strategy used. A depth first search always expands the deepest node first. If an end node is found, one that has no child node, the search backs up to the latest node that has children. 
This will continue until the desired node is found or all nodes have been searched. In a breadth first search, the highest unexpanded nodes are given priority when expanding. It expands from the top down, similar to how we searched the trees in the earlier examples. This will continue until the desired node is found or all nodes have been searched. We've included additional resources on depth first searches and breadth first searches below. This has been QMind's first Intro to AI video tutorial. Keep a lookout for more in the future where we'll go into further topics that will expand your knowledge and tools of AI and computer science.